lesson 1.3 are variables. So after completing this lesson, you will have a good understanding of variables. Basically, what does it mean to assign values to variables? You will, of course, revisit the assignment operators, the two assignment operators, which is the less than her dash and the equal to. You will create variable names that follow the rules for naming of variables in R. And of course, you will learn how to differentiate between R variables and R constants. And you will be able to diagnose and fix the object not found errors that you get quite often in R based on, of course, on mistakes that we make. And you will also need to be able to distinguish between variable names and string constants in R code. And finally, distinguish between numbers and strings whose content is numeric. So these are all the things that you should be able to do at the end of this lesson. The R code for this lesson is available on Blackboard and it's in the file eda-1-3 code.r. So the purpose of providing the R code is that whenever you see code on the slides, you'll be able to look at the code in your own computer uh, and then execute the code without having to you know, laboriously type in the code. Okay, so the idea is that you will look at the slide or a video and then you will probably pause the video uh, and then go run the code for yourself, do a little bit of experimentation, test it out, make sure you understand it, and then come back to the video and continue it. So you should really not be watching the video continuously uh, while the video is playing. Instead, you should pause the video at various points in time and then go and explore the concepts that I'm talking about in the video, explore them for yourself. That's the best way to learn because learning has to be active. If you're just passively listening to something, uh, everything will look fine, but when you actually try to go and do, do it, you'll realize, I don't understand much of what's going on. So you, I don't want that to happen to you. Okay, so in order to uh, execute the R code, essentially what you'll have to do is to save this file, the R file that I've provided. Uh, you'll have to save it on, uh, uh, you know, in your R working directory. And then within RStudio, all you have to do is to go to the working directory and just click on the file. And this file will open in a code window, in a script window. And once you're in the script window, you can just position your cursor within a line, hit the run button, it'll execute that line. So that's pretty easy to do. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. People who write programs, people who use these kinds of environments, they make mistakes all the time. Even after working with something for 10 years, many of the mistakes that I'm pointing out to you, I still make these mistakes. So that's not a problem. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Okay, R variables. So I, you can have a command like X is assigned the value five by using the assignment operator, which is the less than dash assignment operator. Symbolically, what it's indicating is that the value five is kind of being put into the variable X. Or you can say x equals 5 and you're using the assignment operator equal to. So you've really seen two assignment operators. And basically what the assignment operators do is they evaluate whatever is on the right hand side. So this is on the right hand side and assign the result to the object on the left hand side. Okay, So that's really the effect of the assignment operator. It assigns a value to a variable equal to is also an assignment operator. So both of them are assignment operators. They are not exactly equivalent. They're subtly different. But for the purposes of our course, you can treat them as completely identical. And you can use either. OK, I'm not saying they are completely equivalent. For the purpose of our course, they are completely equivalent. OK, so we, again, many times when I'm talking in this course, I'll be using the expression R statement. So for example, X is assigned the value 5. That's an R statement. Okay. So we'll refer to the entirety of the above as an R statement in general. That is a complete command that you execute within R. We'll call it an R statement. Okay. An R statement need not necessarily correspond to a single line because we will be able to break up one statement across multiple lines. Right? So what I'm referring to when I say R statement is 
just a complete uh, R command. One complete R command is what I will refer to as an R statement. Okay, and again another bit of terminology because the above statement performs assignment, we will call it an assignment statement in this particular case. Okay. So why do you call something a variable? Okay, so here x is assigned the value 5 and we can say x variable x has the value 5 at the end of executing this operation. And later on you may go and say x is now assigned the value 10. Okay, so at this point variable x will now have the value 10. Okay, that is why x is called as a variable. The value that it contains can vary over time. Okay, so it had 5 as of this point it now has 10. So it has varied, it has changed over time. Okay, so that's the notion of a variable. Later on, you can even go and say x is assigned the value Newton, the string value Newton. So these two are numeric values. Here we are assigning it a character value Newton. Okay, so again, uh, people who are familiar with uh, certain other programming languages might be used to the notion that a certain variable can contain objects of only certain types. That's not the case with R. You can put any value into a variable. So you might put a number at one point and then you may, you may go and put a character at some other point. And later on you may put a data frame into the same variable. It doesn't matter. All of that is a lot. Okay, it's called variable because its value, its value can vary or change over time. Okay, now uh, in the earlier courses you didn't have to create lots of variables. But in this course we will be creating many, many variables as we perform exploratory data analysis. So it's a good idea for you to understand some variable naming rules. These are not conventions. These are rules that the system enforces. Okay. First of all, you have to understand that R variables are case sensitive. Okay. That means X, lowercase x, is a different variable from uppercase x. Okay. So it is possible for you to have both of these as variables in your R environment and then have different values stored in them. Although you know, we would not recommend that you do that because it's just a recipe for confusion. Similarly, that with the lowercase is different from that with D with an uppercase. Okay, some rules about variable names. First of all, all variable names must begin with an alphabet. Okay, so for example, 5x would not be a valid variable name. Okay, they must begin with an alphabet. It can be lowercase, can be uppercase, doesn't matter, but have to begin with an alphabet. They can contain numbers right so for example i can have a variable name called that one okay and uh, it's that characters and the number one that's fine variable names can also contain periods so for example that dot new that's perfectly fine it's allowed the dot has no special meaning in this context okay it's just something that you're using as a way to separate a variable name that happens to contain more than more than one a word as we understand it okay it cannot contain spaces or special characters or arithmetic operators so the following are not valid first space element that's not a valid variable name because it has a space y hash is not a valid thing because hash is not allowed that special character is not a my dash data looks very innocuous but it's not allowed because dash happens to be the uh, minus uh, subtraction operator so my dash data is actually going to be interpreted as my minus data which means you're saying take the value in the variable called my and subtract from it the value contained in the variable called data right so this is a, a full expression this is an expression with a subtraction operator and therefore this is not a valid variable name at all variable names can contain underscores so for example max underscore sales is an acceptable variable name in fact, most of the time we will try to follow this convention for when our variable name has multiple words. We can also follow this. Uh, we try to remain consistent by following this, but of course, uh, you know, since uh, some of the slides were written at one time, some of the slides were written at a later time, it is possible that you will encounter both of these conventions for multiple word variable names. Now, some people follow a convention of separating different words in variable names by mixing uppercase and lowercase. So for example, instead of max underscore sales, they would write max in lowercase, then s in uppercase and ales again in lowercase, right? 
So that is also some convention that is followed in certain programming languages. It's perfectly fine if you want to follow that convention in R. Uh, that is called camel case. So the, the intervening uppercase letters sort of look like the humps on the camel's back. Uh, that is also something you could follow if you want. But it's generally not followed in the R community. I don't know why. 